Hi everyone, so in the second video we're going to be looking at um, bringing back our camera solve into Maya, uh, overlaying our object, setting up the lighting, and uh, rendering. So at this point I'm assuming that you have your HDR image captured and everything is set up properly uh, on the Photoshop side. Um, so this is the this is the match mover output back in back into Maya. Um, you can see the image playing with, with the footage and the static um, locators in the scene and the camera is here and it animated. Um, some people are having problems with with the image plane not loading the the sequence. So one of the first things I check is is um, the first frame. Sometimes um, the first target file from After Effects is blank. It's like one kilobytes. And Maya doesn't read that so it outputs an error. Uh, so make sure that it's not just the first frame and that the rest of them are just fine. Uh, the other thing is to make sure that you have um, y y your sequence is named um, like this. So you'd have the dot and then the number and then another dot and then the extension. You don't want anything between the extension and the, and the number and you don't want um, anything else other than a dot preceding the number so you can't use underscore for example. Uh, if, your foot, if your sequence is named differently I suggest you go back to After Effects and change it back to uh, just a simple name dot number dot extension. Um, and it's just it's just for viewing in Maya, really. Okay, so let me set up my uh, my panels here. So I'm going to use a three-sided, um, yeah, three panes. Okay. I'm going to be track uh, using the track camera here. And I'm going to be working in the 3D scene in perspective view here. I'm going to turn on a film gate to just give me a nice perspective of the whole thing and try it out. All right, everything looks everything looks correct. Now let's start setting up the scene. So the first thing we'll do is bring in our HDR lighting dome. So I'll go into settings, uh, switch to the mental re-renderer, go to indirect lighting, create image based lighting, and over here I'm going to load up my HDR uh, dome. So for me that would be this one here. Okay. And um, under light emission, I'm going to be emitting lights from this from this dome. Of course, the dome here is way too tiny. This happens to you. Just make it a lot bigger. Just make sure that it encompasses the scene. That's all. Uh, I'm going to be emitting light from this object. Uh, we don't have one 256. 256 is a little, a little too much, so I'm going to go for 64 by 64. Um, because it's really lighting. We're not rendering the scene. We're just lighting it up. Um, samples also bring it down to about uh, 20 or 30 samples. And 16 is fine. Okay. We want to emit diffuse and specular. That's fine. And we're going to use ray trace shadows. Now, in this tab, uh, this is where you do most of your lighting editing. So. If you find that your shadows are too harsh, you can go into the shadow color and um, brighten it up a little bit. Uh, you can also, if you find, on the other hand, if you find the lighting too dark or or too uh, or too um, bright, you can go into the color offset and you can change that. You can also do exposure hardware exposure right in here. So if I actually do uh, six here, yeah. So if I go back to this and uh, mess with the exposure, you can see how um, it's doing HDRI exposure settings right in Maya. Okay, so you can play around with that one and also the offset and the shadow color. Yeah, these three should help you, you know, tinkering with these three should help you get uh, the correct lighting setup that you want. All right. And I'm not going to turn Final Gather. I don't find it necessary to set up the basic uh, lighting rig. 
and honestly I don't even turn it on at all at all um, and it makes the renders go faster final gathering is if you really really need just that final realistic push but you have to be careful because it introduces uh, a lot of other uh, shading in areas that you don't need especially in background objects but let's finish up the render setup so I'm gonna go here set this to um, let's say PNGs and I'm gonna set up to multi file so name underscore number and we're gonna need some film padding padding because we have hundreds and we're gonna enable color management so we're gonna use SRJ, srgb okay linear srgb and and frame will be 339 and we're going to use uh, 720p for now. Okay, just to set, test things up. All right. So this is the render setup. Uh, I don't have to touch it again. This is all good. All right. Now, now let's start placing our objects. So I know from the match mover, uh, from the match mover setup that um, when we set up our coordinate system, that I I, I said that the distance between these two uh, corners is one unit. So that's one unit in Maya. So the distance to the table top will be about two more units, almost. Okay, or 1.8, something like that. So I'll create a polygon surface here. Nice long tabletop surface. And uh, I'm gonna bring it down to uh, exactly minus two. And if you did any measure, measure, measurements in your scene, uh, you'd be able to plug these values in right away. So I'll go here, set it about here. I think it's a tiny bit higher, but let's let's scrub through the video and see what it looks like. I'm middle clicking when I'm trying to select a, a paint um, a viewport without messing with the scene. I, I middle click in it or right click in it. Okay. So it looks like it just needs to be a little higher. Just a tiny bit higher. I think it's minus 1.8, like I was guessing. Let's see. So it's it looks like it's on the edge there. And does it remain on the edge? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to set it to minus 1.82, my best guess. Okay, so that's fine. I don't I don't think I'm going to need any um, any background objects for the wall. I'm not going to be capturing anything. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be capturing any shadows or something like that on the wall. So the tabletop is more than enough for me. Now, um, I'm going to put in a, uh, a pipe polygonal pipe and another shape here and make sure that they are lying on the tabletop itself so all right I'm gonna leave a tiny bit of space so we can see some shadows Bring it back, make it a tiny bit smaller. Okay, and just make sure that this guy touches the table. Okay. And the tabletop doesn't have to be a plane, it could be uh, a cube that helps um, cover up scene, parts of the scene better. Um, okay, so. I'll give these. I'll give these uh, blend materials. So a rendering tab. I'll give this a blend, something bright and colorful. Okay, and this one would be red. It could be any material you want. In fact, if you use 
mental ray, mental ray uh, blends and mental ray uh, shaders, it will always be better than Maya's in the end because uh, you can have more control that way. But uh, okay, that looks okay. I don't remember if Maya sends this move out to the to the render or not. And now we go to the to the to the background object. We're gonna use uh, use background shader. And in here, make sure that all of this stuff is turned off. So no specular color, no reflectivity, uh, reflection limit to zero. Make sure that it doesn't compute anything. It doesn't compute any reflection at all, no matter what the value of reflectivity it is. Um, in the mental ray tab, um, this one is fine, but if you click on the object itself and you go to the mental ray tab, uh, you can, if you if you run final gather, you would notice that it picks up a lot of uh, like around the edges of the object itself. It'll pick up shadows which you don't want, so you can just turn off all these um, all these checkboxes here, and it won't bother you in final gather. Okay, but I'm not using final gather anyway, so it, it it won't it won't mess with my file. So I'll go back to use background. So this object is fine. Now let's uh, let's do a test render. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm in this viewport and render it up. As you can see, without um, without any final gather, it's fairly fast. Uh, and with the blend, we're getting a reflection between these two. Uh, now they're not on top of the object exactly. Okay, let's bring them down to the table. And also, I don't want this object. It it, it should cast shadows. Like it, th this should. If there was light underneath the um, from underneath the table, it shouldn't go through and light up these two objects. So it should cast shadows. That's fine. Um, but it shouldn't be visible in reflections or refractions. So let's give that another try. Okay. Um, also, make sure that you turn off default lighting. Okay. So, in my case, this is a little a little too harsh. Um, the shadows are a little too harsh. So I'm gonna go. Um, first of all, make sure that I have enough. Tabletop area. I'm actually just going to push this back so I don't touch the tabletop area area and uh, bring this here. And also, actually, to help make this draw go faster, I'm going to delete this. Just make it look like that. Okay. Also, uh, so here in. Uh, In the light emission tab, I'm gonna just kick the shadow color a tiny bit. Okay. And also make sure that the lighting is actually matching. The yeah, it should be the other way around. I rotated it incorrectly, so it should be here. Yep. Yeah. That way, the shadow the shadow direction is going to be correct. Should be, yeah. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, you can already see that it's way too bright. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and take down the exposure. Color gain just a tiny bit, but yeah, we're, we're getting better results already. So, um, I 
And don't forget, in Manta Ray, you can go into Quality and set set it to uh, Preview or Final, because that will give you a better result. Let's turn on Final Gather just to see what it uh, what it would add to the scene. All right, so you can see the shading that I'm talking about, that problem area over here, which is caused by Final Gather on on the surface, um, but it does give you a more realistic uh, look here. But when animated, this is going to be a problem. So I prefer to turn it off completely and just have regular lights with regular shadows and so on. All right. Now, um, you have two options here. You can either uh, render it directly in Maya like this, do a batch render um, that would look like this and uh, without doing any post-processing at all. Uh, or you can take this uh, scene and overlay it in Premiere if you want more control over it. Okay. So. I'm going to turn off Final Gathering here, and one thing you want to do is to make sure that this is not visible. So, selecting the light here and render stats, it's not visible, so turn off primary visibility for the IBL, for the for the dome itself. Okay, so it's visible in environment and visible in Final Gather and all that stuff. All right. And also the image plane. Because if you look at our current uh, image render, if I go back to one of these, yeah, you can see the alpha channel has an entire back of the image, right? But we don't we don't want that. We don't need that. So I'll go in here for the image plane itself. Have it selected and go into render stats. Um, sorry, go into. Um, when you're done and you're happy with the track and everything, you just want to render batch render, go display mode and set it to none. All right. So now when we go and render, render our scene, oh, this one here. You'll have just the object rendered properly. And it'll have the reflection of the entire scene around it, and it'll have the shadows. Even the shadows are, are in the alpha map. In this case, the shadows are very small, in my case. Um, but they are included in the alpha map if you had any shadows around it. One last bit. Um, some people had more success actually not using emit light, and instead relying entirely on final gather. So what they would do is they would... Um, this depends on the scene and what how you like the, the lighting result. But um, you select the the, the lighting, uh, the lighting dome, and uh, turn off emit light completely. And in the settings, make sure that you have final gather on. So let's give that a try to see the difference. So I'm gonna keep this and render a new one out. And I ended up with a result that is a lot softer. Uh, the rendering doesn't look as, uh, as harsh and as digital as the other one, um, but you won't get uh, correct shadows and uh, light direction as you would have with um, explicit light being emitted from the IBL. Alright, that is all.